today, John Featherson from Spearfishing Down Under Magazine TV and welcome to this episode's How To's. Today we're going to have a look at uh, something that's a little bit of a trepidation for a few people and that's beach launching. But we're going to show you with the right setup and the right procedures, a piece of cake. So let's get into it and have a look. One of the most useful pieces of equipment you can add to your boat if you're beach launching is what's called a rescue wheel. You see here we have a whole wheel assembly with a hub and it's mounted off by a stub axle to the trailer. Now what this allows us to do is to lift the boat off and put it onto three wheels. Once it's on its three wheels, push it back into the water and allow the boat to gently float off. Now this is a pretty small boat, this Zodiac 500 Pro. However, I've used this process for launching up to six and a half meter cats, so it works very, very well. So on top of that as well, if you have a bearing failure when you're on the road traveling, you've got a full hub assembly, bolt off, bolt on, and you're ready to go. Let's have a crack. Don't forget to put your bungs in, and of course uh, trim your engine up as far as it'll go, so when the boat does come off the trailer, it doesn't dig into the sand. Okay, now we're just going to disconnect the trailer completely from the vehicle. So we disconnect our electrics, undo our safety chain, and this will enable us to completely detach the trailer and boat from the vehicle. Before you go down the beach, depending on the gradient of your beach, just back your winch strap off. If your beach is quite steep, just make sure you secure your boat in place so it doesn't slide off the trailer. Lift our trailer off, and uh, with this smaller boat, it's just a two-man job, on three wheels to push the boat back in until it's in deep enough water, and a simple shove on a good quality trailer like this McKay trailer that we're using will enable the boat to come off and uh, is now floating. Push the trailer back up the beach, pull it back up and reconnect it to the vehicle, go and park your vehicle. When launching off the beach it's imperative to be patient and communicate well with the people in your boat, the processes that you use for getting out through the surf and uh, as I said be patient wait for a break in the swell and steady as she goes and if you're in doubt don't go out that's a pretty good rule of thumb to live by so here we are crossing across the break zone accelerating towards the waves simply backing off before we come across them and when you see a clear area ready to go make sure you go and once you're out through the break you're off spearfishing When returning to the beach, best option is to check for the sets of waves coming through and pick up the last wave of the set. You'll see us here following the last wave of the set back in, right on the back of the last wave of the set. There will be a little bit more water under the boat then and you can safely bring the boat in. This is when a little bit of horsepower comes in handy. Keep the boat on the plane yet on the back of the wave without running over the front. And once the wave starts to break into white water, you can simply slide down over the top of it. Today, of course, is a great day. Small swell, the same principles apply when you're uh, launching your boat with a little bit more swell. To retrieve the boat, we simply re reverse the process, pull out our winch strap, just lay it over the last roller on the trailer so we can quickly connect it to the eyelet on the front of the boat when we get down into the water. Push the trailer back on its three wheels. Having a couple of people to hold the boat straight while you're retrieving the trailer is helpful. Bring in the trailer. This trailer has full roller protection, so if you're in the surf zone and the boat's being knocked around a little bit, then you're not gonna chip your gel coat or damage your boat at all. We have a uh, three-speed winch on this trailer. This is at one-to-one -one currently, which allows us to retrieve a lot of quick slack. That's very useful when you're in the, in the surf zone. You want to get that boat on that trailer as quickly as possible. So you just see we switched to five to one here, just to finish up winching the boat up onto the trailer. If you've got a couple of strong lads, you can usually, with a boat this size, push it straight out of the water, but uh, we'll show you the process of snatching it. We've just got a 14 mil silver rope that we use, a number of eyelets spliced into it, and there's a chain clevis on the end that we attach to the boat and trailer. We simply hook that into the safety chain on the trailer and as you see here drive the boat out. This process stops you from getting any water whatsoever onto your vehicle and of course assists in long-term corrosion protection of your vehicle.
back up and reconnect the boat. If you have a larger boat, you can use your jockey wheel to lift it back up to height to put back onto your tow ball. And of course, don't forget to reconnect your safety chain, put down the latch on your trailer coupling and put all your safety chains in place on your boat. Trim your engine right up, put your latch down for traveling and just bring your engine down until it's nice and snug, gives it some support whilst traveling. We're running here a Zodiac Pro 500, basically overall length about a five meter boat, probably a slightly smaller boat in real terms. Running a 50 horsepower Evinrude E-Tech, great little engine, great balance for this outfit, very good fuel economy out of the Evinrude E-Techs. This is my third one and we've been very happy with every engine that we've had so far, highly recommended. So the combination of this little Zodiac and the Evinrude engine gets along at about 50 kilometers an hour, great little spear fishing boat.